If you're a new or soon to be Tesla owner and you still don't fully understand how home charging works, meaning where you'll plug in, how fast your Tesla should be charging and what setup you need, then this video is definitely going to help you out because today we're going to walk through everything you need to know about charging your Tesla at home along with a couple of mistakes to avoid so you can make sure your daily charging experience is both smooth and reliable. All right, before we get into the real world mistakes that people could make charging, we first need to talk about the three different charging levels because depending on which setup you end up choosing, your charging experience and speed will be very different. Level one charging is the most basic and therefore slowest as well. Way to charge an EV using a standard 120 volt household outlet. The same type that you would use every day for lamps, appliances, and other devices at home. And as mentioned, this is the slowest charging method that you can rely on at home, typically adding only about three miles of range to your vehicle per hour plugged in on average. So for example, if you were to plug in overnight using a typical level one charger, that would equate to around 30 to 40 miles of range over a 10 to 12 hour charging period, which might be enough for people who don't drive much day to day or who have a lighter commute in and out of work in a warmer climate. But it definitely was not enough for my personal lifestyle longer term, living up here in Canada, where temperatures get far below freezing for half the year. Now, if you're considering owning a level one charger, and honestly, I do think most EV owners should keep a level one charger on hand for road trips or destination charging, if not for your own at-home charging on a daily basis, well, there are a few options out there to choose from, including, well, Tesla's very own, but at around 300 US dollars, Tesla's version is pretty expensive in my opinion. So this is where the EV Dance portable Tesla level one and level two charger really shines. It works with a standard household outlet for regular level one charging, but the thing is, uh, this one also includes a NEMA 620 adapter for level two charging at up to 16 amps. That bumps your charging speed up to around 10 miles of range per hour plugged in, which is a significant upgrade over just the standard level one charging speeds. Now I've actually had this charger for over a year now, and I've used it plenty of times on overnight trips, camping, and staying at friends' houses. And what I really appreciate about it is the price. At around 130 US dollars, it's far more reasonable, in my opinion, and a much better value than Tesla's OEM mobile charger. So yeah, if you're going to rely more exclusively exclusively on a level one charger if you're in a warmer climate or whatnot, well, the EV Dance unit is pretty much exactly the kind of setup that you should be looking for. It plugs into any standard household outlet, it uses the native Tesla NACS connector, so there's no need for any extra adapters. And it's also very compact and portable, easy to keep in the trunk or in your garage. I generally just keep mine in my frunk as I never really know when I'll use it. Now in just a moment, I'll break down how you should be choosing between level one and level two, depending on your situation. And with my exclusive 25% discount, the level one drops from around 140 to just around $104, Plus you get a free adapter of your choice automatically at checkout. And this discount actually ends up working for anything on the website, by the way. Moving into level two charging, this is where things step up dramatically in regards to charging speed. So level two uses generally a 240 volt outlet, similar to what you'd use for say a dryer or a stove. And it's what most EV owners eventually end up installing in their homes. In fact, if your household has one or more EVs, this is absolutely what I would recommend, getting a level two, regardless of the format you end up going with. You can technically get by with just a level one in some cases, but level two is just far better for a long-term at-home setup. With level two, your charging speed jumps to roughly 30 up to even 45 miles of range provided per hour plugged in, depending on the vehicle that you have. And that is a massive upgrade over just level one. It also provides enough power in the winter to heat up the Tesla's battery before charging begins, which is something level one simply can't do, but is critical 
critical. Now, I personally do have a hardwired level two Tesla wall connector installed in my garage, and it's been fantastic over the past couple of years. Super reliable and works pretty flawlessly, but the reality is that the cost has climbed to around 450 US dollars, which is a lot on its own, and that's before you were to even factor in the installation by a certified electrician. Once you include that as well, the total cost jumps up even further, where Tesla even estimates this to often range between $1,000 to $2,000. So for a more cost-efficient alternative, one option could be to go with the EVDance Flux Level 2 NEMA 1450 40 amp Tesla portable charger. And this is a charger that also is Wi Fi enabled so that you can monitor your charging stats in real time. And right now, with the Black Friday pricing, it's only about $280, which is a fantastic deal considering the power, the features, and just overall functionality that this charger offers. Here are some of its standout features it has an interactive display that shows amperage, charging temperatures, voltage, charging time and total kilowatt hours delivered. It also features a very long and flexible 25 foot charging cable that makes it easy to reach multiple parking spots. This charger also has full weather resistance so you can safely mount or use it outdoors if that's the best option for your setup. And it has support for fast 40 amp charging, which is near the top end of what most Teslas can accept at home anyways. Oh, and because it's Wi-Fi enabled, you can view all of this data directly in the mobile application, giving you convenient and real-time monitoring and control. So yeah, I mean, overall, it's a feature-packed level two charging solution at a great price. The only thing to keep in mind is that you do need in this instance, a NEMA 1450 outlet that is rated for EV charging installed at your home by a certified electrician. And finally, level three charging refers to supercharging, essentially public DC fast charging stations, not something that you would really install at home. They're great to know about, but they're not really part of a home charging setup, so we'll move on for now. If you want a deeper dive into DC fast charging and how to get the most out of superchargers, definitely check out my other videos. Now that we know the difference between the different types of charging levels, here's the breakdown in an easy to follow chart. I'll leave this on screen for about five to 10 seconds. And if you wanna check this out for yourself with a bit more detail and time, just pause it right here and take a look. All right, now in winter, your Tesla needs extra power to actually heat the battery up before accepting charge. And the problem is that level one simply cannot keep up with that requirement. So when I first bought my Tesla years ago, I actually ended up breaking the battery during the winter using only level one. I thought that that would be adequate. The car basically sat at all the way down to 0% state of charge and wouldn't end up charging because the battery was simply too cold. It ended up taking a couple days to get it back up and charging again. Now that same week, I ordered a level two charger, got it installed, and everything has been smooth ever since. So if you live somewhere like I do, where winters are real, I strongly recommend going level two right away despite that extra cost and installation. Now, before installing anything, it is also worth taking a moment to assess your space and figure out the most practical setup for daily use. Walk around your garage or driveway and think about a few key details. Where does your car actually park most of the time? Will the charger be indoors, outdoors, under a carport? This determines whether you need weather protection, extra mounting hardware, or a different outlet location altogether. Can the charging cable comfortably reach the charge port without being stretched or rooted awkwardly. By the way, if you can't get your vehicle close enough to your charging station for whatever reason, I'd recommend you also look into these EV extension cables that can actually add up to 40 feet of length to your charging capabilities, both for level one and level two charging. Now for most households, installing the charger inside the garage is the ideal scenario. It protects the cable from sun, rain, and snow, keeps everything at a more stable temperature and generally leads to better charging performance long term. 
If you already have a 240 volt outlet in your garage, like a NEMA 1450 that looks like this, the installation process is extremely simple. You can essentially just mount the EVDent level two charger on the wall, plug it in, and you're pretty much ready to go. However, if you don't currently have a 240 volt outlet available, then you'll need to bring in a licensed electrician. They'll take a look at your electrical panel to make sure it has enough available capacity. Most setups need around 60 to 100 amps of available headroom, and they'll run the wiring to wherever you plan to install the charger. Now, the total cost for this type of installation can vary depending on the distance from your electrical panel to the charging location and whether your panel needs any upgrades. But in most cases, homeowners tend to spend somewhere in the realm of $250 to $700 for the full job. That said, it is definitely worth checking to see if your city, province, state, or even utility provider offers any rebates for EV charger installations. A lot of regions do still provide financial incentives to encourage EV adoption. For example, here in Canada, I received $600 back for installing my charger, which covered the bulk of the electrician's costs. So before you book the installation, definitely just take a moment to look up what applies where you live. Once your home charging setup is dialed in, the next step is optimizing how you charge to keep your battery healthy over the long run. As a general rule, you don't want to top up to 100% every day unless your Tesla is equipped with an LFP battery. For other Tesla battery chemistries, a daily charge limit of around 80% hits that sweet spot for longevity. It's also worth using scheduled charging, which lets the car warm the battery before charging starts, something that becomes especially valuable in the winter when a cold battery charges a lot more slowly. And on that note, preconditioning before you drive off makes a noticeable difference as well. It brings everything up to an optimal operating temperature, improving both charging performance and driving efficiency right from the start. These small habits done consistently over months and years help preserve range and overall battery health for years to come. If you wanna pick up one of these chargers from EV Dance for your yourself to take advantage of the incredible Black Friday deals right now, you can receive 25% off any product on their website plus a free charging adapter, which can be very useful if you ever need to use non-Tesla charging equipment. There are links down below in the video's description and pinned comment. So thanks all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.